Hey guys, long time no see, and guess what guys, I'm back. So I took some vacation, and the sole purpose of this vacation was to get my shop cleaned out, because this shop is my happy place. Anyways, now the shop is clean, it's time to get some projects done. And the first order of business is going to be a lumber storage rack. I have always leaned up my sheet goods and my boards up against the wall, and that's no good. They get warped and wonky, and then, you know, my shop actually floods every time it rains really hard. So some of them would get damaged by water. So this lumber rack is gonna get all of that off of the floor, and it's gonna have something to stack it up very neatly. So I'm gonna build a permanently fixed half A-frame unit. I am not a big fan of mobile shop furniture. They get in the way and you have to move them around all the time and it gets kind of frustrating. All right, for this build, I have an obstacle in the way that I need to get over. There is a 18 inch, two inch wide retaining wall sort of thing on the foundation that supports the slope of my backyard. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to shim the top so I can permanently attach it to the wall. But hey, you know, um, I'll figure it out. Masca Products also sent me a pocket hole jig that I will be using during this project because my K5 jig bit the dust. The clamp on the K5 jig failed, so I had to throw that in the trash, which is a bummer because I just built the K5 T-Track lockdown cabinet. So I'll probably build another one for the Masca jig if I decide to keep it. Besides this review, I'm also gonna do a pocket hole jig showdown video. This is going to put the top three pocket hole jigs on the market against each other, and we are going to finally settle the debate on which one's the best. So if you want to get notified for those videos when they're released, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, pound that like button like it stole something, and enable your notifications. And without further ado, let's get it, dude. So we're going to need some lumber for this woodworking project, or it wouldn't really be a woodworking project. So I ordered 14 two by fours from Home Depot and went to the store and picked them up. And they, for the most part, got everything straight and nice, but there was three boards that looked like it got put through a wood chipper. Now I'm gonna take the boards over to the miter saw. This miter saw is actually new. I've had it for a couple of months, but this is actually the first time I got to use it. I will have a tool review on this saw in a couple of weeks. I wanna get a couple of projects under its belt first. And as you see, I am using the Klingsport HD100 miter saw blade. That blade is absolutely fantastic. And to keep everything nice and organized, I'm gonna go ahead and mark all the pieces as I cut them as listed on the plans. Next, I'm gonna bunch up all the long stretchers as they are all the same length. When you're doing this process, please clamp all of the boards together at the ends and also to the miter saw fence. Also, please use proper support under the boards and then cut them all at the same time. This will ensure that all your parts are consistent. And then once again, go ahead and mark all of your parts according to the cut list. As you cut them, this will help you keep everything organized when we go to assembly. And here is the pocket hole jig that Masca Products has sent me. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to my table. Uh, as I said before, my K5 jig finally died. So I had to throw it in the trash. So um, I'm gonna check this one out. I'm gonna do a couple of projects before I actually do the review on this jig. But initial thoughts, this thing is pretty sweet. It is made out of solid aluminum. It has a built-in dust collection and it also has this little nifty turret that will set the bit color depth. I'm not gonna go into complete details on how to set this up. We're gonna save that for the review. Now, one thing I can tell you is that I have used a lot of pocket hole jigs, basically all of them. And I gotta tell you that this jig probably has the best dust collection out of all of them. It's very impressive. And back to the build project. We are gonna go ahead and drill pocket holes in all of the base frame parts. Just make sure you center the pocket hole jig on all of the two by fours. The frame assembly is pretty straightforward. I use a right angle square and clamps to assemble the boards. It might be shop furniture, but I still want it to be square. Work your way through all four corners and make sure the clamp is tight to the boards and the boards are flush with each other. And if you notice that I do not use glue in this project and there's a reason for that. I want the ability to take this apart if I have to. 
And now we're going to install the center supports. Uh, as y'all know, I don't do math, so spacers are my jam. So use spacers to install the middle stretchers with pocket hole screws. And then it's just a lot of rinse and repeat all the way up the apron. And now it's time to clean out the corner where this rack is going to go. As you see, this is where I have all my lumber just laying against the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up because it was pretty disgusting. And check out this dustbin I got. This thing is like super industrial. This thing's like six times the size of a regular dustbin. I'll have a link in the description below. And now we put the frame into its place and we're going to install it to the concrete wall using Tapcon screws. The first thing you're going to do is use a wood bit to drill through the plywood and then a masonry bit to the concrete. Then use an impact driver to drive the Tapcon home. This is a pretty easy process, but you need to make sure that you have a drill that is powerful enough and has a hammer setting to drill through the concrete with a masonry bit. And now we're going to break down the plywood for the top of the support frame. This is just a half inch piece of sanded plywood, so I'm going to mark out my lines with a T-square. Now the measurements here are actually a little bit wider than what is needed, so I'm actually going to freehand this with a circular saw. My brother would be so proud right now. Next, we're going to take the oversized piece to the support frame, and we're going to screw it down with one and five eighths inch screws. Place the screws about one every four inches. It only needs four on the end and about five or six on the front. Also screw down the plywood in the middle too, but do not screw any in the back apron. Pay attention to where you place these screws because in a later step, we are gonna attach the top frames to the base with pocket holes. And you notice that I'm sliding my foot against the apron. I'm just making sure I did not misfire the screw. And then I'm gonna trim the front of the plywood and then we're gonna use a flush cut router bit to flush it up against the apron. Now we're gonna go over to the miter saw and cut the parts for the top frames. Notice that these parts have a 10 degree angle on the front of each part. The front legs will actually have the 10 degree angle on the top and bottom. The back leg does not have the 10 degree angle as it sits flush with the support frame. And here is a shot of all the parts together on my semi-flat assembly table. And now I'm gonna drill out pocket holes and all the parts for the top frame supports. Notice that the top support that holds the top shelf will have a pocket hole on the front and the back faces. This is because this piece is too small to have both sets of pocket holes on one side. To assemble these shelf supports, I'm gonna use some clamps and a right angle square. Plus I also have a clamping call on the front that has the same 10 degree angle. And following the spacing theme, I'm going to use a spacer to properly distance the middle and the bottom support piece. So it's this part of the video that I forgot that I have these T-Track clamps. These clamps are awesome if they're used properly. You can use them to hold your piece down flat on the table, assuming that you have a flat table, and they also keep the pieces in place. So here's my first oopsie of the video. I thought that I cut this piece too long, but it turns out I used the wrong size spacers. So all the correct details will be in the plans. So now that the top supports are assembled, we are going to go ahead and drill some pocket holes in the bottom of each leg. The mask of jig is pretty small, so it's pretty easy just to take the jig to the workpiece itself. You could also have done this before the top frame supports were assembled, but I digress. And now on to the tricky part for this build. I'm going to cut down a two by six to size and we're going to use this as the back nailer for the top supports. 
I'm going to mark out spacings for pre-drilled holes. So I'm gonna use a two by four and then mark a line. Then I use the exact same spacer I spaced out the bottom frame support with and then move that over and make a line. And then we're gonna use a countersink bit to drill out the holes. Okay, so off camera, I attached the two side frames to the two by six. And then we're gonna use the same spacer we used to space out the bottom supports. And we are using the same spacer we did to space out the bottom stretchers. This way we can drill the pocket hole directly into that bottom stretcher. And to attach the frames into the two by sixes, we're gonna drill a three inch wood screw directly into the pre-drilled hole that we made in the previous step. And about this time, my roommate got home from work and he helped me move the top frame support into place onto the bottom frame support. Thank you, Randy, that is much appreciated. And now we're gonna use the same spacer we used in the previous step to fasten the top frame support into the bottom stretchers. You're going to fasten in the front and the back. So use a clamp and secure it in place and then work your way all the way down the rack. Now for the next step, I'm gonna cut out a couple of strips of half inch and three quarter inch plywood. And then I'm gonna glue these together and this is gonna make the shim for the back of the two by six nailer. So the good people at Starbond reached out to me and asked me that I wanted to try some of their products in my videos. So I obliged. So we're gonna use the Starbond Medium Quick Set and the Accelerator to glue these two pieces together. So we'll go ahead and take the Quick Set glue and apply an ample amount on the half inch side. And then we're gonna take the Accelerator and spray it on the three quarter piece. So when these two contact each other, it's gonna create an instant bond. So I happen to think this is sorcery, but uh, talking to James King and his King's Fine Woodworking Facebook group, this is actually science and it's real. So look at that, it's actually not coming off at all and um, that's pretty cool. So now we're gonna take some more glue and apply it to the other strip and then we're gonna take the accelerator and spray down the three quarter inch and do the same process and it will stick together and won't move. And the fine people at Starbond has offered a 10% discount code for all of you lovely people. The discount code and the link to their website can be found in the description below. And now we're gonna put the shim in place behind the two by six with the Lignum Vitae King's Fine Woodworking Thor Mallet. Lignum Vitae is one of the densest woods in the world, so that shim had no chance. And then we're gonna toenail six inch GRK screws into the studs to secure the frame to the wall. I did not have plywood long enough to span the full length of the two by six, so I had to make it in two pieces. So we're gonna install the other piece and do the same process and then toenail it into the wall. And now we are in the home stretch. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the three shells, which these three shells are all in different widths, but they are all the same length. And then we're gonna take these shells over to the miter saw and cut them to final length. And then we're gonna install the shelves, start on the top. We're gonna to put it in place, flush it up with the ends, and then we're gonna secure it with one and five eighths screws. The middle shelf is a little tricky because the spacing is so tight. So you have to finagle it in there and then tap it down with a mallet. And once it gets past that 10 degree angle, it should sit down properly. And then fasten it down with two screws into each stud. The bottom shelf is a little bit easier because the spacing is a little bit wider. And then it's just rinse and repeat by fastening it down into the studs. And for the last step, we are going to install the lip onto the front of the bottom support. This is going to keep the plywood in place. We're going to drill pocket holes all the way down the length of the board and spacing them every six to eight inches. 
I mean, this board is probably the worst two by four in the lot. I mean, it looks like it got attacked by a bear or a woodchuck or a woodpecker or something like that. But anyway, go ahead and install the lip by flushing it up on the ends in the front and securing it down with the pocket hole screws. And now time for the most physically grueling part of this project is moving all your plywood into place. I have seven sheets of Baltic birch plywood and those things are not light, but the Gorilla Gripper makes easy work of it. Oh, man, that was a fun project. I am hot and sweaty. It's Alabama and it's not even hot yet. Oh. Anyways, thank you guys for hanging out and watching the video with me. There are plans for this project on my website and the link is in the description below. Every purchase that you make helps support our channel and I have several other build projects on that website as well. So once again, thank you for hanging out and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and cheers. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know.